Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I'm going to check a new VTX from FXT, the FX877T. This VTX supports smart audio and beat mode and has a selectable output strength of 25, 200 and 600 milliwatts. And in addition, it supports 37 channels. Why 37? Because some channels are not allowed in the States. So they had to remove a few channels in order to comply with US regulations. In addition, it features an MMCX antenna connector and the input voltage is between 7 to 28 volts. The package itself is pretty compact, inside we're getting the user manual, an MMCX to SMA antenna connector, this harness, and finally the VTX itself. The weight of the VTX is 5.69 grams, and its dimensions are 37.7 by 22.2 by 6.1 millimeters. In addition, on the side we have two mountain holes and the distance between these two holes is about 30.5 millimeters, so it makes it easy to edit on top of your stack. On the top of the VTX we can find an MM6 antenna connector, a microphone, a 6 pin connector on the bottom, let me show you the pinout. The left pin is the volt in, as I mentioned before it supports between 7 to 28 volts, then the ground, the smart audio pin that you need to wire to your flight controller in order to control the frequency and output strength of the VTX, and then this connector for the camera, so we have the video, ground, and plus 5 volts. If you don't wish to use smart audio, you can still control the VTX by this button over here. On the bottom of the VTX, we have 7 LED indicators that will tell you the output strength and the frequency that you are currently using. So now I've got the VTX powered up. The first LED indicator is indicated with 1, then 2, 3, pit mode LED indicator, A, B, and E. In order to set the channel, you will have to short press this button on the side and you have to refer to this section. X stands for an LED being off and 1, 2 and 3 means that it's on. So for example, if I would like to set the VDX to channel 7, the left LED indicator which is labeled with 1 needs to be off and then the LED indicators which are labeled with 2 and 3 needs to be turned on. So now as you can see these two LED indicators are on, which means that now the VTX is set to channel 7. Now let's set the band. In order to enter the band selection mode you will need to long press this button for about 2 seconds. You can see that now the LED indicator which is labeled with B is blinking and these three right LED indicators indicate the band. So if you would like to set it to band F, you will need the LED indicators which are labeled with A and B to be off and the one which is labeled E to be on. So now it's set to band F. And finally, in order to determine the output strength, you will need to long press the button until these two LED indicators are going to flash and short pressing the button is going to toggle between the different output strength. First of all, when the pit mode LED indicator is blinking, it means that now it's on pit mode and the output is 0.1 milliwatt. When LED indicators 1 and A are flashing, it means now it's on 25 milliwatt. 2 and B means that now it's on 200 milliwatts. And finally, when 3 and E are flashing, it means that now it's on 600 milliwatt. So now I've got the emergency RF meter connected and when it's set to 25 milliwatt it reads 15.6 milliwatt. On 200 milliwatts I'm getting about 190 milliwatts and finally on 600 milliwatts I'm only getting about 350 milliwatts. The next thing I was about to do is to connect the FX877 to my Ishin Wizard TS215 and head outdoors to see how it performs, but unfortunately I made a mistake. Instead of connecting the LiPo ground and plus to the correct pins, I've connected it to the plus 5 volts and ground outputs for the camera and the VTX burned instantaneously, so I won't be able to test it out. Hopefully I'm going to get a replacement the VTX soon. I'm not sure if it's going to happen and then I'll be able to test it out and show you how it performs. My advice, always pay attention before connecting the battery, go through the pinouts, see everything is wired correctly and I actually didn't expect it to be burned by connecting to plus 5 volts and the ground of the camera but it did so pay attention in order to prevent these mistakes from happening. I still hope you find this video useful, of course if you have any questions about this VTX feel free to ask it in the comment section down below and I'll see you soon on my next videos. Goodbye.